Welcome to Secrets of Stand Up. I'm Rich Williams. I'm going to tell you everything I know about stand up comedy so you can be a better comic. And to be honest with you in this video, most comics won't tell you. So it's on me. When you tell me you have 20 minutes of solid material, what I know is you probably have 10. When you tell me you have 30 minutes, you probably have 15. 45 to an hour, you probably have 20. Take whatever amount of time you think you have of solid material, bits, jokes, chunks, stories. Cut it in half. Because you're going up and, yeah, you may have done a 20-minute set once. But you're adding in all the laughter from that really friendly show that you did. Or that show where you were just killing it and the audience needed a little pause to catch their breath. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to get a true sense of where you're at. And here's why the, the computer just went off. Here's why it's important. There's going to be times in your career when you get opportunities and you may accept them before you're ready. Now, I want you to think about this. You think you have 20 minutes. Now imagine doing a, a one-nighter at a bar where most of the people there, they don't want to hear comedy. But you have to do 20 minutes, no matter what. You're being paid. Even if the show goes horribly wrong, you're being paid. You're going to go on stage. Half the crowd is going to tune you out. You're going to start rushing your material. You're going to start forgetting bits because that happens when you go into fight or flight. You're going to freeze up at times. You're going to cut out a bunch of the tags after the punchline. And before you know it, you're going to be scrambling. And you're going to be 10 minutes into your set, 10 minutes into your act. Try to do a real evaluation of where you're at in terms of material. This doesn't include crowd work. You really shouldn't be doing crowd work unless you're the headliner. And, and don't have 30 minutes of solid material and then shush. And then say, oh, I can headline because you could do crowd work. That's cheating. It's not going to benefit you in the long run. Hold on one second. Willie, you have to go lay down. Five more minutes. Go. Here. Go. <clears throat> if you take a headlining spot, if your name is at the top billing, be ready. Because... You don't want to go backwards. You don't want to bump back down to middling or featuring. Middling and featuring, it's the same thing. You want to establish yourself as a headliner or establish yourself as a feature and move up. You don't want, especially a club. So here's a scenario. You're really firing on all cylinders. A club says, hey, you've hosted here. We really like what you do. Can you come in and feature? Be honest with yourself first and then with the club. If you don't have, I'd say 40 minutes, let's say you're slated to do 25 minutes. I would have 40 minutes of solid material before I featured. Again, the same reasons. It could be a bad night. And if you're scrambling up there and you're like, I don't know. What do you guys want to talk about? That club is always going to remember it. Even if the manager or the booker isn't there that night, the wait staff talks. The person running the soundboard is going to talk. They're going Because the manager or the booker says, hey, how did Rich Williams do featuring for the first time? Oh, it was rough. But he told me he had uh, half an hour, and he only had to do 20 minutes. Yeah, but... I don't know what got into him. It, it, just, it didn't start off good, and then it went downhill from there. Do you know how hard it will be to improve your image with that club again? If you're doing an independently produced show that like you and your friends put together, that's a little bit, well, it's a lot more understandable. That's when you can really stretch yourself moving from feature to headliner or MC to feature because 
it's not uh it's not as established it's a one night deal that's where you should be trying to make those moves and jumping up in the clubs i mean there's kind of a monopoly on clubs now there's the funny bones the improvs i'm not sure but i think they're owned by the same company or a lot of them are so if you can't deliver that's that's going to hurt you it's going to set you back so when you're evaluating how much time you can do evaluate how much material you have not how much time you've done on stage if that makes sense you you want to take out the time that's added in for laughter and all that and and think okay if if it's the worst possible show how much time do I actually have where I could just go up there and talk? Can I go up there and talk for 30 minutes under the worst possible scenarios? And again, there's sometimes where you want to push yourself. There's sometimes where you're given an opportunity before you're ready. You need to take that opportunity because that's the only thing that's going to push you to write more. Let me give you an example from my own career. So back in 1997, I had been emceeing my home club, and I wasn't that great. But I had this Bill Clinton impression. I looked so much like him, and the voice was super easy to do. So I sent a tape off to the AVN Awards, the Adult Video Awards, and I got booked. I went out, and I think I had to do 10 minutes, just as Clinton, and I wrote a bunch of stuff. I wasn't ready for the opportunity, but I took it. And... I killed because it was a novelty and I was making fun of the um, adult film stars and the actresses and uh, it did wonders for my career, but because I played it smart. So the guy who owned the hilarities in Cleveland and I, I don't think he owned the one in Cuyahoga Falls, Akron, I think, but they were connected. They were both named hilarities. He called his booker, Freddie DeMarco, who owned Deja Vu in Missouri, and said, hey, you got to book this guy. We got to get him in to Cleveland Hilarities. And it was in this giant theater at the time before they found their, their new spot. And so I get a call randomly from a booker. Hey, the guy saw you. He wants to book you to headline. And I was like, huh? I, I was, there was no way I could do that. And hilarities in Cleveland, I don't know what it's like now, but it was an A club. I mean, it was packed. It was my first road gig, and I told them, hey, I'll come in and feature if that's worth it to you, you know, putting me up for the, the week. He said, absolutely. I went in, and I did all right. I, I had some good nights. I had some bad nights, but I did the job, and... Because of the Clinton stuff, I could do promotion for the club on radio and, and all that. So it was beneficial for them, and it gave me a great opportunity. And then Freddie, who was so good to me, he booked me for like four months in all these other clubs, and he called up other bookers. And it's because I didn't go out and embarrass myself. I didn't say to him, oh, yeah, I can headline, and then try to figure it out a month before the show's. So in that example, I didn't have 10 minutes just as Clinton, but I knew I could put that together. So I sent the tape to the Adult Video Awards and I got it and I did really well. But then when I got asked to headline what I considered an A-list club, I said, no, 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 I'm not ready for that. Most comics would jump on it. They go, yeah, and they would, you know, do whatever they could to get that 45 minutes. But I knew that that would have freaked me out and I wouldn't have succeeded. And then I would have burned the bridge, not only with Cleveland hilarities and Akron hilarities, but Freddie DeMarco and all the clubs that he booked me in after that and all the other clubs that he was connected to because all the bookers knew each other. And it was like a circuit. So be realistic. Go for a slight jump up. 
and, and use that as motivation to write and, and get ready for that opportunity. But don't go around thinking that you have all this time and all this material. If you want a headline, have a solid hour. Have basically uh, a comedy album worth of material. Unless you're doing a, a local show for a fire department or at the Elks Lodge or something like that. And, you know, maybe your buddies, maybe the feature act, you have two features on the show and they wind up each doing 20 minutes. So then you only have to do a half an hour and you can do that if you have 40 minutes. And that's how you can get the experience of headlining and carrying the end of the show being the, the final act where there is that pressure that you have to do really well and hopefully better than all the other comics on the show. But you don't have to uh, do 45. You don't have to do an hour. You can work it out. That's it for this video, except I want to give you an update. I, I figured out, well, I'm still working through it. So I started September 19th. This is video 66. One of the videos early on, the Kevin Brennan video, that was a goof that I was doing because um, I posted it on Twitter. People were attacking Kevin Brennan and uh, questioning his credibility as a comic. And I used to look up to Kevin Brennan when I was starting out. And then we did the Aspen Comedy Festival together. And uh, I was that, that was like a, a goof, a one-off. So I'm not going to count that towards 100. But it's too confusing to do like 100 and 100 days, but then I'm numbering the videos. And also, I think the best way to show you these principles is to get back out there and start doing stand-up and starting fresh with none of my old material, going to the open mics, doing the visualizations, writing every day. And so that... To have 100 videos total and then make the switch to that will happen right around my birthday, January 20th. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm backing out of the 100 and 100 days. I might still do that, um, but I'm going to shoot for my 100th video, which will probably be 101 because I won't count the Kevin Brennan one. And I might do a couple extra videos so I can get the numbers right and all that. And then I want to show you what it's like starting fresh. It's not 100% fresh because I have all this experience and um, knowledge, but I'm going to go through the videos, the things that I've made to help you and use them for myself and see where how far I can go. Do I have a second act for my comedy career? The, the honest answer is I don't know. I don't know if people want to hear what I have to say. I think they do. I'm very confident. I'm arrogant. This is one thing. You probably clicked off the video by now, but I was going to talk about this with the arrogance versus confidence. You know who my favorite comic of all time is? Me. And I know that sounds super cocky, but I actually thought about it like in those writing exercises I tell you to do, like really analyze things. Norm MacDonald is my favorite comic outside of me. And Patrice O'Neill is a close second. And then I love all the, you know, Richard Pryor's, George Carlin's, and people like that. Sam Kinison, Bill Hicks. But the reason why I'm my favorite comic is I've made myself laugh way more than any other comic has ever made me laugh. And I want you to start thinking like that. Like, I don't think that I'm better than Norm MacDonald. I'm better for my sense of humor. And I'm a very tough judge of my comedy. When I'm writing a post on Facebook, you could, I'm, I'm Rich Williams on Facebook, by the way. You can find me. It's a black and white photo. Um, you'll see most of the things that are jokes, they're heavily edited. I'll have like five edits on a two-line status because I, I want it to be as good as it can possibly be. So yeah, I'm going to see if my all time favorite comic can actually make it without posting clips of crowd work 
starting off with no material except for what he writes. None of my old jo- jokes, my little, little bits, my little sketches. And given my situation, I have to go all in. And it'll be interesting because you'll, in the beginning, you're going to see me flounder. It ain't easy. Despite the, the leg up I may have. And you may look back at all my videos and go, this guy is full of shit this whole time. He's not funny. But you know what? That was the mistake during my career. I would always try to kill, but I would do the same material because I wanted comics to respect me. I wanted industry people to go, wow, who is this guy? And I wanted to impress women. That's the reality of it. I'm willing now to suck in front of you folks as long as I'm getting better, as long as I'm staying focused on my goal. And you'll find out a lot about whether or not these tips and techniques and exercises work because I'm going to apply all of them. It should be fun. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.